Well, hello, hello everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever the time happens to be where you are. Welcome to the Amma Manson Show. And just as I promised, when I promise uh, wonderful people, I deliver them. So today I am going to be having a conversation with Mr. James Chrissy Addison again. We met last week on Friday and he promised to come back. I am absolutely delighted that he's back and we continue on a very important topic. And it is very appropriate for Father's Day. Let me wish all fathers a happy Father's Day from me. Let me also inspire the sperm donors to also find out what it means to actually father a child, to know the diversity of things and choices and commitments it takes, to move from just being a sperm donor, being a biological occurrence, to becoming a pillar in a child's life, which is what the father really is. May you all find inspiration. May you all aspire to do better, not for your sakes, not for the sakes of the mothers, but for the sakes of the children who have not asked to come here. They did not request whatsoever. My hat off to the mothers who are fathers, the father mothers, the single ones who do it all. You deserve credit on both occasions. So happy Father's Day to those women who are standing in to perform the roles of fathers who are not uh, present in children's lives. May God bless you. May he strengthen you. May he give you the resources, the intelligence, the connections, and everything required to do a good enough job for the sake of these children. Let's kickstart the show. We're going to start with the intro. And when the intro is done, I will introduce my guests and the topic. Hello, hello there. Welcome to the Amma Manson Show. So hopefully you are not a stranger here, but what goes on here is education, definitely some empowerment. We add humor, information, and just a good vibe generally. It is not just a talk show, it's a live show. We talk about life, we unpick life, we find solutions to the things that stress us in life, and we make progress together. It is the Amma Manson Show, and my name is Amma, your girl, your educator, your motivator, and I kick your hand wherever we need to. Enjoy. Invite other people to join in, and hopefully you have a wonderful, wonderful experience on today's show. Let's get straight into things. Well, it's your brand, our expertise, and success. Welcome to Amma Manson's Marketing Publicity Package. We offer you interesting services which allow you to get your brand noticed. We will bring you to the digital space, whether you are personally ready or not, to increase your reach much better than traditional media. We are a company with many years of experience, and we bring those to digital media to help you represent your brand and to market. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello again. Good to see you. Right, so let me acknowledge a few people before we get started with the show. I would like to acknowledge our supporters. And the key one today is Reflections for a Thirsty Soul. This is a book written by uh, Ya Foda Atubra. And Tia is a, an author. I will have the link in on how to purchase the book in a minute. Do follow that uh, link, go check it out, get the book, it's very inspirational. It is written by Auntie Ya when she was 10 and 60, so it's a book written from experience, from knowledge, from living it. Not just talking it, but actually living it. I think uh, anybody who needs inspiration will find it a very, very useful book to read. So check Reflections for a Thirsty Soul out, definitely uh, highly recommended by me. And you can buy it using the link you can see on the screen. I will talk to you about the other um, sponsors and supporters in a minute. 
But let me go and find our guest. And I will introduce my guest in a minute. I'll let my guest introduce himself, in fact, so that we can all learn from himself how he wants you to get to know him. Hello, Gracie. Hello, James. Can you hear me? Hi, I'm a... <laughs> Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So we are good to go. Crazy, let's start with a short introduction of yourself. Okay. So we have network issues. You're going to have to work with me on this one. Can you guys hear me okay? I don't see Quizzy. I don't know if, if it's from my end or from his end. Can you please check for me? Can you hear me? Can you do a simple sound check for me? Can you hear me? I know I can't see Quizzy. Uh, the screen is frozen from his end. But I want to know whether it's a network issue from me or is it a network issue from his end so that we can fix it appropriately. Feedback from you would be very, very much appreciated. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Or can you not hear either of us? Let me also attempt to do a check. Oh, you can hear, that's good. So it means that it's a problem from Chrissy's end. All right, hi, Peter. Hi, it's good to see you. All right, so today I am talking to the emotional intelligence expert, that is James Quasi Addison. We are discussing raising emotionally intelligent children. It's a very suitable, suitable topic on Father's Day. Parents try our best to do, um, to give the kids the best we have. But if we have some knowledge on emotional intelligence, I know you can't see him. So it was an issue from his end. I'm going to attempt to restore from his end. We had issues setting up last week and then it settled down. So I hope it's one of those. I'm just looking to see. If it's technical, guys, we'll be able to sort it out and get him back on. We are discussing emotional intelligence and we are discussing how to raise emotionally intelligent children. That comes with a set of instructions. I have my notebook and my pen ready. I definitely will be taking notes. I want my kids to be emotionally intelligent because I do know that it's a deal changer uh, between success and otherwise. Last week, I shared the fact that a course on emotional intelligence was transformational for my career. I am able to relate to students in a slightly different way. I am able to connect and get buy-in from the kids, not necessarily just from my professional training, my ability to relate with my students, my ability to get the students to buy into what I do goes beyond that. It, it transcends just professional training and it was that course in emotional intelligence, which was all the difference. So bear with me. I do have technical issues to fix with Quasi. And when that is done, he will be back on and we would continue a very important discussion. I am going to attempt to share some information about James. I would have preferred that he did share that information himself. And he told you about himself the way he preferred you to. But in the absence of Chrissy himself, it would be a good thing to do just to share a little bit of background um, with you. 
do you bear with me actually let's take a short ad break so that as the ad rolls i would be able to speak to Chrissy, find out what it is that we need to work on so that we can fix it so do bear with me let's continue with the ad whilst i fix this and we start the program properly we do social media strategy social media management social media setup brand analysis where we help you create awareness of your brand, brand perception, where we let you perceive your brand, compare your brand to similar ones to see performance. We help you expand your reach using our analytics. We help you showcase your previous work. We help you appeal to the new market. We increase your online presence using digital campaigns, your reach increases, your engagement increases, your experience is integrated, and you do a lot of things for specific niches, including authors. It is all about the sociology and physiology, not necessarily about the technology. And we are a close knit group, which work together to get you your outcomes. Get in touch with us if we can help you market your product. For example, this could be yours your product right here on our program showcasing your skills your uniqueness for people to see explaining the relevance of what you do do you get it very unique brand representation letting people not just see what you do but reaching a discerning audience who are very likely to be your clients once they understand my audience are discerning they are not followers they make up their mind based on good information. Come on, let's do this together. can see be it short clips be it infographics be it banner for your social media pages or any type of media which allows people to engage with your brand to understand what you are about to showcase yourself on your own terms to bring people clarity about what you do and do not represent now that's our job it is our job to help you get your message across whatever it is you are into whether it's a jp consultancy whatever kind of micro business you do whether it's a construction a good a service you deliver it is our business to make sure that your audience gets you and gets your message clearly and they discern and make discerning decisions favorably for you Corona travels, hey, hey, doesn't matter. It is still our business to promote. All right, hello again. It's been static on my screen as well for a bit, so I'm not sure if you guys can see me or you can hear me. If you still can see me or hear me, can you please let me know that you can see me? I am still trying to connect, yes. Um, the technical guys are busy working on it, trying to get Quasi to join us. But um, whilst they are doing that, I would like to share a little bit of information about the guests we have. So that those of you who might not be familiar with Kwesi, those of you who are probably coming across him for the first time, will realize who he is. You would understand um, why I wanted to talk to him on Father's Day about... 
emotional intelligence. So we are talking to Kwesi about emotional intelligence, but I want you to know who James Kwesi Addison is. And once we've done a little bit of a profile bit, I am hoping that Kwesi himself will be here and he will tell us about himself uh, in his own words. I'd have preferred he did it himself, but he's not here yet. So I am going to share a little bit about Kwesi. So a simple search online for James Quasey Addison and you will find his LinkedIn profile. Uh, he's a CEO, social developer, innovator within Africa. He holds executive and trustee positions across a range of public, private and non-for-profit entities within Ghana. He's the founder of Ghana's first dedicated center for emotional intelligence and was Ghana's first qualified emotional intelligence master coach. His support is focused upon helping providing public, private, and third sector organizations with the expertise and resources needed to build the capacity for emotional capital. So he's all about building emotional capital. In his career, he has earned a reputation for his effective leadership of significant change and improvement, putting in governance and managing growth and education management and industry. He holds a master's degree from the University of Cape Coast, a master's degree from Coventry University. He's also a visiting lecturer from a number of West African higher education establishments. So Kwesi is a respectable man, very distinguished in the area of emotional intelligence. And I am hoping to avail his experience and his skills to you this day, if you would be patient with us a few more minutes. So I am still on standby for PC. What I will do is show you a couple of his videos, just so we can get a flavor. And whilst that rolls as usual, I will go off and I will go. My name is Mr. James PC Addison. Ghana's first internationally certified emotional intelligence coach and the CEO and the master trainer for Addison International, Ghana's premier center dedicated to building emotional capital. I'm very excited this year to join wonderful speakers for the Credit Union Rebranding 2020 that is coming up at Cotrack on 25th and 26th of February 2020. I'm very much excited because the organizers have this year included emotional intelligence as one of the means to revitalize this industry to rebuild the confidence of people. This year, the organizers have seen the need to include emotional intelligence to enhance members' capability of being in tune with their own emotions and that of others. When we are able to do that, we will be able to react appropriately to the demands and aspirations of our customers. In that way, we'll build two major things here. We'll build trust, and then we'll build confidence. Now, when confidence is built, mobilization becomes very easy. It may be hard to believe, but it's the hard truth that a minor disrespect to the culture of the people you are dealing with can lead to a very bad consequence on savings and mobilization. Therefore, a manager should be culturally intelligent. I'm therefore appealing to all managers, management, and staff to attend this August program. For a manager of the 21st century should have the ability to use his emotional intelligence to maintain cohesive team environment. That will foster creativity, productivity, and increase bottom line positively. Thank you and see you there. So we are still talking to James Quasi Addison very soon. I am hoping that we are able to get Quasi on so that um, you can experience what he has prepared for us today on raising emotionally intelligent children. <laughs> Hi, 
Hello, hello there. Welcome to the Amma Manson Show. So hopefully you are not a stranger here. But what goes on here is education. Definitely some empowerment. We add humor, information, and just a good vibe generally. It is not just a talk show, it's a live show. We talk about life, we unpick life, we find solutions to the things that stress us in life, and we make progress together. It is the Amma Manson Show, and my name is Amma, your girl, your educator, your motivator, and I kick your hand wherever we need to. Enjoy, invite other people to join in, and hopefully you have a wonderful, wonderful experience on today's show. All right, it looks like we might be lucky, and James might be with us. So let's check. Hi, James. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hi, James. Can you hear me? James, can you hear me? <laughs> That's the good idea you see now. Right. I think I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, good. I can hear you, but um, I think it's playing on another device so I can hear feedback from your end. If you're watching it on something, uh, you can reduce the volume on that one, please. Is that okay now? Right, let's see. Yes, it sounds it. I can't hear it back. It's still there to an extent, a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Right, we are still trying to set up. I can see things. Is it on another tab? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Is it All right? Network is not very steady today. Guys, you will have to be very patient with me today. I am with James Quincy Addison, as you can see. James and his technical guys are working really hard to try and stabilize the uh, network so that we can hear um, what he says and we can see him effectively. And then we will bring a treat to you what we have prepared. Emotional intelligence, very important for everybody. But emotional intelligence in the parents, so they can raise emotionally intelligent children. Oh, Felicia, you know, it's so, so mutual. Godfrey, can you hear me? Hello. Hi. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me good. There's a little bit of a feedback. Yeah. When I speak, I can hear myself echoing a little bit in the feedback. So I don't know if you've got the program on another device or is it running somewhere else? No? But I, I don't have any feedback here. Yeah. Right, it's I okay. I don't have that feedback. If you can't hear it, then probably the audience can't hear it either. So let's try and move on and we'll see. I had a tab open. I'm just okay. That tab and we'll see. Maybe closing that tab may help. Maybe it might not, but we'll see. Right, Kofi, uh, Kofi, good afternoon again. 
Yeah, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. I hope you are well. Let's start with a small introduction. So for people who've not seen you before, on the last bit. I'm doing I'm, very well, are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. Thank you very much. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and what you've prepared for us today? Thank you, Kes. Hello. Can you hear? Hello, yes. I'm still here. I can hear you. Hello. Ah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. Let's get started. Uh, Pazi, can you introduce yourself a little bit to the audience for me? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mr. James C. Anderson, Ghana's first internationally qualified emotional intelligence coach. Uh, business well we've been engaging educators we engaging HR CEOs individuals and helping them to build emotional capital and uh, I'm also the CEO for Ghana's first center dedicated to building of emotional intelligence and we've recently launched our Emotional Intelligent TV, which is the first of its kind in the whole world, uh, dedicated to solely emotional intelligence capability building. We've also launched our online news portal, Ad News GH, which only focus on uh, positive news. We have nothing to do with negativity, even if we report negativity or something negative happening, we look at the lessons out of that to publish it. So we develop an app for that and uh, any part of next month is uh, we're going to launch that online news portal as well. So basically this is uh, about Mr. James Gracie Anderson. It's amazing. But Chrissy, you use the term. I need you to explain that a little bit to us. What is emotional capital? What's that? Yes. <laughs> you know, when you are starting a business, you need a capital that yeah. could be capital. In life, too, we need things that will help us to become successful in life. And one of them is the emotional capital that you have. So emotional capital is simply your ability to accumulate the needed emotional strength in order to survive turbulent times, which is very, very important in life. Okay. So it's an ability to withstand life's difficulties. Um, if I was looking for capital, I would go to a bank. If I'm looking for fiscal assets, I'll go to specific places. So if we want to get emotional capital, where do we go to? You see the emotional aspect. You speak to the emotional coaches. Okay. You are born with emotions, right? But we should have the ability to harness them for good. So uh, it's better you look out for an expert in that area to help you identify areas that you are weak. This bring, brings to mind, there is what we call a psychometric measure. This is a measure of our emotional capitals in various abilities. We have a measure for empathy. 
We have a measure for self-confidence. We have a measure for this. Okay. Please be patient. We do have network access issues. And yes, I. it looks to me like we've lost Casey again. When that happens, we will just uh, wait until he's able to reconnect. So do bear with me. Let me flag it up with the technical team with him. And see if we can get the team to fix the issue as usual so we can continue to enjoy the wonderfulness that James brings to the table. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. He's actually uh, disconnected yet again. He's gone off. So I am going to run the teaser that I was running before he came whilst I go to find out what's happened and how we can restore. Let's get straight into things. <laughs> James Quincy Addison is an experienced international social developer, innovator, and the chief executive officer who holds executive and trustee positions across a range of public, private, and not-for-profit entities within Ghana. He founded Ghana's first dedicated center for emotional intelligence, Addison International Center for Emotional Intelligence, AICEI, and also Ghana's first internationally qualified emotional intelligence master coach, facilitated by the ClearPoint Leadership Strategy, now the EQ Development Group, on behalf of the Multi-Health Systems Incorporated, Canada. These attributes makes him one of the very few Africans certified to administer EQ 2.0 and EQ 360 on behalf of MHS Incorporated Canada. His interventions focuses on providing public, private and third sector organizations with the expertise and resources desirable in building capacity for emotional capital. James Quincy Addison has earned a reputation as an efficient leader who has impacted significantly through effective governance and growth with educational management and industry since 2014. He holds two master's degrees from the University of Cape Coast and the Coventry University in the United Kingdom. He's also a visiting lecturer for a number of West African and European higher education institutions. In 2016, his passion and benevolence sparked the desire to give back to society through education and counseling for emotional capacity development. In collaboration with Nana Nom, the chiefs and queen mothers of Abiaze, Ejumako, Enyan, and the CM traditional areas, the Nana Nom Educational Development Program was birthed. This initiative is intended to ensure that emotional resilience capability will be deeply embedded into every school through the whole child approach. He's also the initiator of the Emotional Intelligence Africa Summit, a free annual event that is designed to encourage powerful community learning with the key objective of promoting the essence of building emotional capital in Africa, which follows an established European layout. The Addison International Center for Emotional Intelligence, which he founded, conducts research and teaches people of all ages how to develop their emotional intelligence, supports leaders, coaches, consultants, and organizations to apply emotional intelligence knowledge, tools, and concepts, helps build individual ability to manage difficulties with greater discretion and stress control transforms educational environments into centers of excellence with a provision of social emotional skills to children and young people, leads and open up access to communities to develop emotional capacity to ensure community cohesion and collaborations through the help of NGOs, faith networks, and traditional rulers, and helps the youth build emotional resilience to deal effectively with anxiety, self-harm, self-medication, crime and other distress and emotions. James Quincy Addison has facilitated training sessions in various institutions including Airtel Tigo, NVTI Wider Management, the Ghana Police Service, New Horizons Special School, Ghana Technology University College, Commander Training College, Mount Zion Methodist Church Sakumono, Agape New Testament Church East Legon, Presbyterian Church Pacho, Yali West Africa Cohort 9, the Young Executive School Kaswa, Royal Orchids Montessori Kaswa, etc. 
He represented Ghana at the Africa Emotional Intelligence Conference in May 2018 in Lagos, Nigeria, and that of Dubai in May 2019, and also the Pan-African Conference for Children Ministers. The Addison International Center for Emotional Intelligence now runs certificate courses in emotional intelligence in partnership with the Presbyterian University College Ghana, the first of its kind in Africa, as well as a three-week online master course in emotional intelligence in collaboration with the EQ Development Group of Canada. For your emotional development trainings, proprietors, teachers, chief executive officers, employers, employees, HR managers, politicians, lawyers, journalists, schools, public institutions, corporate Ghana, contact 0268-3309-51 or 0559-4592. 07 or email Addison International GH at gmail.com. <laughs>right i am still waiting for crazy to join us but i think uh, the trailer was very useful in describing some of the things that he does let's talk a little bit about this emotional intelligence from a parent's point of view which is what we are discussing today why is knowledge of emotional intelligence important to you the parent yourself you need to be emotionally intelligent if you are going to raise emotionally intelligent children. How emotionally intelligent are you? How are you evaluating this intelligence? Do you know how to impart this onto your children? Do you know the skills the experiences, the do's and don'ts of raising emotionally intelligent children. I was having a conversation with a friend about this and she says, oh, no, those people are very manipulative. I'm like, uh, no. People who are manipulative has also, have also not really got the emotional balance accurate. People who are emotionally intelligent are in tune with themselves, but they also respect other people's boundaries, they know you have to teach emotional intelligence with ethics. You need to make sure that you teach your children about equitable behavior. The differences between everything you can do and the things you elect to do. And in order to be able to teach your children this, you, the parents yourself, need to have the knowledge. So let's have a little poll. How emotionally intelligent are you? And how are you evaluating this? What are the attributes of an emotionally intelligent person? Let's start from there. What are the attributes of an emotionally intelligent person? What are the attributes of an emotionally intelligent person? How can you look at somebody and decide that this person is emotionally astute? What's the difference between that person and the other person who might be intelligent in other ways, but not emotionally astute? What makes other people have control of their feelings and certain others don't? Do we know how to develop these things? Let's start from that first question. What are the attributes of an emotionally intelligent person? Come on. You've never been shy and you're not going to start today. Type your comments, give me your ideas, and let's see. Whilst we build capacity and wait for James to join us. Our guest is having challenges rejoining the feed. There is a group of people working really hard to try and restore access to him. And when he's able to gain access, he will be back on and we will get his input. But let's talk in the meantime. Thank you, Aisha. It's good to see you. The capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions. Bang on. And to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and emphatically. I like that. There are some people who are very clever, some people who are very successful in other um, areas. 
but they find it very difficult to interact with other people. They become very angry easily, or they become withdrawn unnecessarily. They become overburdened by other people's actions, but don't really know how to tell people how they feel. They are angry by what people do, but they smile and grit and pretend that it's okay. And they get even more frustrated the more they pretend. And all these things are examples of when you've not got the balance right, vis-a-vis -vis emotional intelligence. And then you see some people who are always capable of dealing with issues with a plum. There are some people whose feathers are never ruffled. And even if you get underneath the skin, you get there briefly and you go straight back out and equilibrium is restored. There are some people who seem to manage conflict a lot better. And there are some people who are eternally uh, living in uh, discord with other people. There are some people who just can't peacefully coexist with other people, regardless of what the agenda is, regardless of uh, how well-meaning these people are. They just cannot get other people to live in peace with them. Now, that's also one of the signs that tells you that not everything is well uh, in the emotionally intelligent department. Emotional intelligence is key to both personal and professional success, I'm telling you. Emotional intelligence can be the difference between gift, raw talent, and somebody who does it without. There are some people, teachers, I'm a teacher, so I'll tell you from my profession. In my profession, you are working with little people. Well, if you're a primary school teacher, and you are working with the most difficult group of people to work with on this planet, which is the age range I teach. I am a teenager specialist, I'm a secondary school teacher. These guys are all over the place. They look big, they feel big, but don't necessarily always act big. And when you work with teenagers, you find that the balance is very difficult to strike. The balance between being the adult in the room and facilitating some responsibility for these people to help them grow and nurture without necessarily uh, wasting precious curriculum time on unnecessary things, you know, and you find teachers who find that balance and the kids know exactly where they stand with them. They are able to come in into a safe working environment with a smile on their face, but do know that nonsense is not welcome. And you walk into those classes and everything is so effortless. The kids know where they stand. The teacher knows where they stand. And usually it has nothing to do with subject knowledge. It has very little to do with the technical stuff of teaching and learning and delivery. And then you go to classes sometimes. I, when I've gone into management, I've had this problem so many times. You find a teacher who is so technically on point, knows their stuff, can really teach these kids, and the kids just don't want to work with this person. They just don't want to. They aggravate the kids the wrong way. The kids aggravate them right back. It, it is chaotic in this relationship. And it took me some time and I finally went down, bingo. It is the emotional intelligence of the teacher which actually tells the difference between the two scenarios I've given you. The one who creates discord and the one who creates an atmosphere of calm, an atmosphere which is, is suitable for working, where boundaries are in place, respect is established, but fun is had by everybody there is an open communication channel. And sometimes you just want to bottle it and pass it on to people. And I've always said that to people, oh, if I could do, if I could bottle what you do and I could sell it, I'll be a millionaire. Well, the funny thing is what bottles, what those people do, what distinguishes them from the ordinary people is emotional intelligence, the awareness of scenarios, the ability to preempt and prevent is one of the important things that people who are emotionally intelligent do. They are able to read situations in real life. They are able to come up with accurate assessments. They are able to create strategic responses to these assessments that they make in real time. And they are able to e effect a strategy 
to dissolve things, to de-escalate situations, to prevent aggravation in the first place. Have you come across anybody, having listened to this, who is emotionally very intelligent and knows how to comport themselves? If you have, can you type in some more of their attributes for me? Do you know any emotionally intelligent people? Now that we've given that definition. And what attributes do these people have? If we can unpick them, if we can actually find what it is that they do, it might be possible for us to bottle it. It might be possible for us to mimic it. It might be possible for us to uh, copy it and apply it in our own scenarios to improve our interactions with people. There are some people that you can't even speak to, even when you are supporting them. They perceive you to be attacking them. And I spent ages dealing with people like that. I'm not fighting with you, I always say. I am on your side. Don't you see it? I am your ally. I'm your ally. I really want to help you. I am on your side. I am not your enemy. And sometimes it takes a bit before the person actually comes to that conclusion. And phew, we begin to make progress. Some people don't even get there. And then there are some people who spot you from a mile and know that you are here. And you are here to help them build. You are not an enemy. And even if you are an enemy, they would manage you. Because sometimes you need resources from your enemies in order to effect the changes and the growth and the development that you need. It's not always your friends who have access to what you need. Oh, yes, Auntie Dakwa, you are welcome. They appear calm and they can create stress-free environments. Very logical thinking, even when sometimes they intentionally create uh, the facade of um, illogical behavior. So sometimes you find people who will laugh to diffuse scenarios they will elect not to address things head on and bang on immediately. They might pause, allow things to de-escalate before they begin to respond to situations. Those are examples of people who understand emotional intelligence. I should say it's, it's self-awareness, absolutely. People with high EI understand their emotions, bang on. And the more important thing is the second half of that first sentence. And they don't let feelings rule them. The fact that I am angry with Aisha should not really influence the way I speak to Aisha. The fact that I am frustrated by a scenario should not have me throwing a tantrum because I am not a three-year-old. I am not a three-year-old. The difference between a three-year-old and myself is not that we all don't get upset. I get upset. A three-year-old gets upset. But I have control of my responses as a result. Self-regulation. Aisha, you do know the subject area very well. It's the ability to control emotions and impulses. And that's the key thing. Impulses. Delaying your gratification sometimes. Holding off so that your response might be a bit more coherent. So that it's your brain speaking and not just your heart speaking all the time motivation. People with high EI are willing to defer immediate results. It's the delayed graf their gratification for long-term success. Thank you. They are really empathetic. They have social skills. They really do. There are some people who are not um, academically or technically very intelligent, but they are able to use emotional intelligence to bridge their gaps they know where, where resources are that they don't have, and they are so skilled in getting people on board with the agenda to bring their skills and expertise. Those people can ask people to donate absolutely anything, and people will willingly do that. And then there is those of us who don't have this intelligence, and when we need things from people, nobody wants to do anything because we simply don't find the tools to communicate the importance of what we're doing to the people we're trying to engage with. We get more frustrated the lower your EI is, really. People who have high EI, they, they seem to breeze through life. Everything they touch turns to gold. Wherever they go, you find harmony established because of their presence. Harmony is established because of their presence. 
they are not overtly confrontational, even though they don't broker nonsense. And this is one of the key things I find myself discussing with people from our community. I don't like nonsense. And I'm like, who likes nonsense? I detest nonsense. But it doesn't mean that I'm rude to somebody because I detest nonsense. No, it doesn't mean that I demean another person because I don't like the position, the standpoints they have. Yes, I have to be able to have uh, discussions with people. We can have disagreements for sure. But I also have to be mindful of the fact that people are entitled to an alternative view. That ability to accept other people's alter alternative views when it's not what you wanted to hear is one of the key determinants of emotional intelligence to me at the moment. Somebody says something which is different from yours, that ability to pause and listen and decipher and work out whether what is being said makes sense or not, whether it is fit for consumption or not. And even if you decide that the person's view is unfit for your consumption, you have the wisdom, you have the knowledge, you have the intelligence enough to realize that not all of us need to come from the same standpoint. That it's possible for people to stand on alternative views and it's possible for you to work with people with alternative beliefs. It doesn't make them any less than you. It doesn't make you superior to them. It is just that you have different views and you can work together. Those who are able to navigate that complex scenario are more emotionally intelligent than average. People who are pig-headed are not emotionally intelligent. And this is one of the things many people don't quite understand. Being pig-headed about things, being dogged about things, wanting to be a hardliner sometimes, overtly hardlining, no room for other people to engage with you would only create dissent. And people who do that, not very high on the emotional intelligence scale, unfortunately. Humble lions. Oh, and to that one, you have hit it. You have hit it. Bang on the money with that. People who are astute emotionally, they are very, they come across as very humble. They come across very docile, but you know that you don't mess with them. You know that you don't cross them. You know they will not scream, they will not shout, but they will put you in your place whilst they wear a smile on their face. I know quite a few of them. Humble lions is a very accurate description of them. Unpredictable, very strong-minded, absolutely. They push agenda without confrontation and they push agenda sometimes unknowingly to you. You think you are the one who's made the decision, but they've just manipulated you where they need you to be. So although you've been manipulated, you don't feel aggrieved. You don't feel like complaining because you think that you've come to that decision yourself. They tend to be people who are scaffolders. They give you the scaffold and they guide you and direct you and cajole you to arrive at a point. And they do it so seamlessly, it makes you think you did it yourself. Do you guys recognize any of these characters? You know any? Emotionally, emotional intelligence is a must have to thrive. Benedicta, you couldn't have said that more eloquently if you tried. It is the deciding factor between success and otherwise. In the past, people thought that success was because of IQs. I don't think so. I've seen people with lower IQs achieve significantly um, impossible things in comparison to ones with higher IQs who can't do those things. Your IQ can be wasted if you don't have emotional intelligence. And with emotional intelligence, any lacks you had in terms of IQ can be compensated for significantly. Parents must acquire in emotional intelligence. I'm telling you, not just for our kids' sake. We need to have emotional intelligence in manipulating and in navigating life with our kids in uh, raising our kids but also we need to be able to teach emotional intelligence to our children and this is the funny thing this is where most of us find ourselves struggling we must teach what we don't have we must teach what we don't have i don't know how that's possible how do you teach what you don't have 
how do you pass on what you don't have? Oh, yes, Benedicta, it's not just you. It was me too. I thought it was IQ. I always thought it was talent. I always thought it was gift. I always thought it was knowledge. It was wisdom. It was wisdom all along. Wisdom is another word for emotional intelligence. Wisdom. It was wisdom. Yes, Benedicta, we've got to pass it on to these kids. We've really got to get it to these kids. It's the decider for these kids. But the problem is, do we have it ourselves? And even if we have it, do we know how to pass it on? Do we know exactly what to do to train a child to be resilient? Not to give up at the first obstacle because life has a whole uh, stampede ahead for them. Yes, blockages, obstacles of all sizes. Yes, yes. It's a steeplechase, this life. It is not a smooth marathon. No, it's a steeplechase. You run and you hit the barrier and you have to go through the barrier in order to continue to make progress. And we need to teach our kids that ability to take knocks and to keep moving. To be slapped and to ignore and keep going. At the moment, with the Black Lives Matter agenda, I have had a few discussions with people around this. People get stopped by the police all the time. It's not everybody who is very pleasant with the police. But some people are so emotionally intelligent, the officer comes and you go, officer, officer, come on. Why me today? Come on. Is it because I is black? And the officer says, oh, no, I'm still challenging the race card, but I'm doing so with a smile on my face. Is it because I is black? with a smile on my face, is different from, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am still challenging. I'm not letting it go. But I'm challenging with a smile. The person I'm taking on is not able to get aggravated because I'm smiling. I am seemingly coming from an area which is pleasant, but I'm not actually discussing something pleasant. I am still discussing the race card. I am still calling somebody to task. Why are you taking me on? It's still getting asked. But you're doing so from an emotionally intelligent position. And you are less likely to be taken on by uh, figures of authority if you are emotionally intelligent. So at the moment, I have a boss. My boss is quite particular about the way she does things. The way she does things is contrary to the way I do things. Yeah, we could clash and we could fight. And my question always remains, how would you want it done? The minute I ask that question, she's like, no, no, I'm not the only person whose view counts. I'm like, no, but how would you like it done? No, no, no. It makes me sound like I'm a bit dictated. I'm a dictator, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's like no, how? you have your preferences. So what are your preferences? And occasionally, she would say something, but most of the time, what are your preferences draws her attention to the fact that it's her way or the highway. And when I do that and she gets that realization, she backs right off. We've never had a single confrontation. Never. Sometimes he, she comes across, we do this, do this, do this, and I know it's not beneficial. And I will do something else and I'll say, look, I know you said that we should do this, but I wanted to show you the alternative so it's visible. Look at it. If it still doesn't work, I am happy to do what you want. So I'm not being insubordinate. I know what you said. I acknowledge what you said. But there's an alternative view I feel you didn't see. And for that reason, I am demonstrating that alternative view. But please have a look at it and know that you have the backup of always going back to what you wanted if this doesn't work. Again. I can't remember any instances when the alternative view has not been viewed favorably because you can see it visibly, tangibly, done. But it's not presented in a confrontational matter. It is not presented as if I know better than you. It is done from a very meek, very humble position, but I'm still asserting what I want done anyway. And in most cases, what I want done is done. What I want is exactly what happens. We are made to believe that when you back at the Obroni, they back off. We don't know sense. When you back at the Obroni, he shoots you. When you back at the Obroni, he wants to teach you who is boss. And in most cases, you are not boss. You are not boss. 
So why put yourself in that position? Why put yourself in that position? Why elevate him even higher in authority? Why make him feel like stamping on you when he clearly has the boots high enough to stamp on you? Why take that risk? To me, that is a sign of lack of intelligence, really. It's lack of intelligence. It doesn't make you big. It makes you very little in my eyes. It tells me that you don't really understand the basics of this life. You haven't got a clue. You haven't got a clue. Yes. Somebody with a whip is managed strategically. Somebody with a whip raised is definitely not dissed. That was in those days. Well, Aisha, you see, principles of those days can also be applied to these days. May be modified, may be modified. I mean, what I'm doing with you in the past would have been done on the television, but today you're doing it on your phone, but it's still the same thing. The principles haven't changed much. The core principles have not changed much. It's just the delivery tools and techniques. The aesthetics have changed, but the core hasn't changed much. So we can always look at the past. We can always look at what worked and what didn't work. And we can learn lessons from there. Do bear with me. I need to double check that our guest is still accessing what I sent across, the link, so he can come back. Right. You will have to bear with me. I think all of you know that we have network issues at home. And yes, when we have network issues at home, they can be difficult to resolve. I will have a look and see if Quasi can join today. If it's possible for us to resolve and get him back on, we will. If it needs that we do it later on today or we do so tomorrow. And as soon as I said that, I heard a fantastic sound. Hi, James. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. So, in your absence, we were talking, uh, audience and I were talking about how to spot emotional intelligence and the importance of emotional intelligence. So that's where we stop. Mm -hmm. The last one was from Aisha mm -hmm. Amber. And he says that in practical terms, it means being aware that emotions can drive our behavior and impact other people positively and negatively. And learning how to manage those emotions, both own and others, especially when we are under pressure. Very critical. Very critical. Right, but see, now that you are back, let's continue with our conversation. How do you emotionally intelligent children? I really want to know. Well, good, good. You know, uh, first and foremost, it's very, very important for us to raise up our children to be emotionally intelligent because emotions are involved in everything that we do. Yeah. So our ability to manage the distressing ones is what will determine how far we can go in life. Please For repeat. Instance, people, yes. Emotions are involved in everything that we do. So our ability to manage the distressing ones is that, that will determine how far we can go in life. Because we can easily be put off by a simple emotion. Yeah. Right? For instance, a, a medical doctor, a lawyer, I mean, I mean, any profession can go into marriage. And the norm is that a year or two or three, there should be a child in the marriage. Oh. So if a year or two or three, a child doesn't come, and the social uh, uh, stigmatization that comes with it. If that person with all his profession or her profession is not able to 
withstand this social stigmatization before you realize a whole person's uh, professional conduct as well as their normal life has been thrown off gear. Mm. We've witnessed people that have taken to drinking because of the fact that there is this a simple issue in marriage. Yeah. So if this is what emotions can do, then ability to manage them should be a big deal for all of us. Okay. And as me and you are aware, uh, children are the future of tomorrow. Mm. So in order for them to have that future of tomorrow, it means they have the present of today. Okay. That is very, very important. That simply means that what they need today, if it's not given to them, then they don't have a future that we're talking about. Oh, yes, I want to take that portion again. The, the leaders of the future must have both the presence of the future to make the future uh, possible. The leaders of tomorrow must have what it takes in the present now to make the future possible. That means we should be intentionally enough to ensure that we give them the necessary skills they need to survive in the 21st century. Another reason why I'm very happy that we are looking at this uh, area today is the fact that in 2016, World Economic Forum, they predicted that by the year 2020, emotional intelligence is going to be the employee differentiator. Absolutely. That means, that means employers are going to look for people that can work in a team. Absolutely. People that are very creative. People that are assertive instead of bullying. People that can collaborate with others. So that year, they pre when they predicted, they came up with the first 10 skills that we need for the 21st century, and emotional intelligence was among them. But you know what is funny? Karen, I told you the other mm -hmm. time that I used to be mm -hmm. a STEM coordinator, maybe 12, mm -hmm. 12, 13 years ago. I used to be a STEM coordinator mm -hmm. at the time. Most, most countries were looking to push the STEM agenda. It was going to be the next thing, a differentiating between special countries and individual others. And so they had a list of STEM skills. And the mm -hmm. STEM skills included teamwork, resilience, <laughs> um, uh, project mm -hmm. management. Good. And now that I was thinking about it, what was actually built as the STEM skills were all rolled into one as emotional intelligence. Yes. The STEM skills are yes. 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 Most of the time, when we talk about emotional intelligence, uh, if you are not careful, your mind will only be uh, tilted towards the emotions. Yeah. But then, this, yes, let me give some basic uh, definition for us to know that it comprises a lot, right? Emotional intelligence is a, is a set of indispensable social and emotional skills. It's a set of indispensable social and emotional skills that are needed to leverage emotions and knowledge for good. It's a set of indispensable social and emotional skills that are needed to leverage emotions and knowledge for good. That tells you that what you are saying to the fact that you could see that all those things that were put together in the stem were, were all, all of them could come together as emotional intelligence. intelligence. So very, very important. I was talking so, about children. Um, there's a little bit of a delay, so I didn't know you were speaking. I was telling them before you came back about scenarios where yeah. intelligence is very critical. And I was talking to them about a boss that I had 
whose teaching philosophy violates my own. Mm. What I do is too radical. What she does is too conservative. And we work together, but we never clash. She is my boss. And so when she tells me what to do, I know that what she wants to do is a bit archaic. If we went to senior management, uh, mine versus hers, management will go for mine. And obviously, when you do that, you will create problems between the two of us. She's the one who makes immediate decisions which affect me, so I cannot make an enemy of her. And so she would give me a task, and she says, this is all you have to do. I'm like, okay, no problem. I will say nothing. I will take the task, and I will go off, and I'll do exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted. But before I presented to her, I would say to her, well, you asked me to do this, that, and that, and I would like to hear you. It's a very good idea. But I felt that there is a, an alternative view. So what I have done is I have done it the alternative way. I want you to look at my alternative way with an open mind. And if it genuinely, genuinely doesn't work for me, I am prepared to go back and do what you said in the first place. And yeah, it still has a hundred percent return. You've never had to go back and have to change anything. She is able to move through because she makes the final decision, and I like it. It's what I wanted anyway, and it's win-win. People were really expecting us to clash when we first, when I first arrived, but it hasn't happened. The people don't quite understand why it hasn't happened. And remember that I have had the benefit of emotional intelligence training. And it's really making the difference between uh, aggravating people or making people feel like they're on your side. And you doing it together, not against each other. And that's one of the important things you need to do in this life anyway. Don't you think? Yes, you, you, you did very well. What you did was to connect to that woman's emotions. Yep. The, the woman wants to feel that I am the boss. She is I'm the most superior. Yeah. But you were yes. You were you were using your ability of asserting, right? Now to become assertive simply means that you do whatever you want to do to get the results. Yeah. Right. I want to be giving some simple definitions for people to know. Please but do. sometimes some of those theoretical definitions are difficult for people to assimilate. Now an assertive is your ability to get things done the way you want it without necessarily uh, having to be little people. Yeah. So what you did was real assertiveness. You will tell the woman, you will appreciate the woman, you empathize with the woman, you connect to the woman's emotions that you are my boss, you yeah. have the final say. This is what I've done. What do you think about that? In your mind, you have done something. You are finding a way to get it approved because from your experience, from your uh, education background, you think that this is what is good. How do you now get your boss to believe in that and buy into that? The only way you can do that is to assert. And in asserting, you just have to understand the person, appreciate the person's point of view, then come up with a superior argument and find a way to get to a compromise. This is a positive compromise. So you don't go belittle the woman that no. you know what I've done, I think is, is, is good with my 25 experience in this. This is what I believe you know. That is not what you did. Oh, you, you could him out. I could have come again. The other yes. option is her boss because her boss brought me on for a reason. When I first started, they told me what they wanted me to do, and they told me the difficulties I was going to face, and if I ever experience aggravation, come straight to me and I'll fix it. And yes, that option I can go to the very top of all of us and go tell them that this person is not asking me to do those, this person. So you go back and report. But if you do that, it makes your life impossible. Because the person who manages to today becomes aggravated, and the person who show you where power lies. And that is it. That is it. That is it. You know, very, very difficult bosses 
can only be managed by emotionally intelligent people. They are difficult not, not because they, they necessarily want to be difficult. You see, behind every behavior, there is a story. Behind every behavior, there is a story. Behind every behavior, there is an emotion. So whatever your boss is doing, being intimidating, being uh, oppressor, all those things are coming from somewhere. So you don't have to turn a blind eye to that particular cause. But what you, you then have to do is to let the boss know that you appreciate all that they, 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 I mean, you put the affairs away, you allay the affairs. You get to my point. You made your boss to believe that you are not there to take him or her off her position, but you are there to assist as a subordinate. And that is the best way that you, you could have gone around it. It's very, very important. Interesting. But we've got to be able to teach, <laughs> which is what we are trying to discuss. That's it. To raise emotionally so that we give them the asset to need to succeed. We see, how do we do that? What do we do? Good. 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 It's, it's a very good question. Now, before I go into how do we do it and uh, the skills that is needed to ensure that our children became, become emotionally intelligent, I want just to give some three or four uh, things about kids' emotions, children's emotions. Okay. Children's emotions, yeah. Okay. I'm coming out with a book uh, in that area, right? So I want us to understand some basic things about children's emotions, right? Now, the first thing I want, I want parents to note is that children also have emotions. Okay. Children have emotions. The fact that somebody is a child does not make him a less human. You right. my point. The, the fact that somebody is a child does not make him or her right. a less human. He's a human being, even when he he is a clot of blood in the mother's womb, we consider that to be human beings. That is why we don't support her. Yes, that is why we don't support unnecessary abortions, right? They are human beings, even at that point. So that mentality that children don't have emotions or children cannot get angry, children cannot fear something, children cannot be frustrated, depressed, we should forget about that because children do have emotions as adults do. Very, very important. Now, the second thing I want parents to take note is that we should have the ability to read children's emotions correctly. We should have the ability to read children's emotions correctly. Inability to read children's emotions can cause us as parents. Very, very important. Most of the time, children that and uh, wants to commit suicide, will not take a, just a day or two to commit suicide. So do you have the eye to see that my child's behavior has changed? He's now called in. When we are on the table during dinner, he doesn't come. He wants us to finish, then he will come and have his or her dinner alone. What is happening? Children that take their life, don't take their life in a second or a day. It might have been planned. They might have battled with that for so many years or months before the final decision. So parents should have the ability to read kids' emotions or children's emotions uh, correctly and offer them the necessary support. You see, the next thing I want parents to bear in mind is that Children will bar means exit emotions. Children will bar means exit emotions. We should be fast enough to provide the needed support because most of the time their exit plan may not be that good. Very, very important. Children will exit emotions, but we should be fast enough to provide them 
they needed solution and support because most of the time, their exit plan may not be that good. It's very, very important, right? Now, children can also not hide their emotions. Children cannot hide their emotions. That is a controversial statement. <laughs> yes, children cannot hide their emotions. So when they express their emotions, we have to use it as an opportunity. We seize it as an opportunity to teach them and help them manage it. So don't just take it that my child is angry at me. Who are you to be angry? How I suffer to put you in that first class school? That is not the case. What we are saying is that the fact that they are angry does not mean that it's targeted at you per se. But they can't hide it like we adults. Adults can be smiling with you, cosmetic smiling. Adults can be behaving nicely with you, but deep within them, they are harboring a lot of things against you. Children cannot do that. So the fact that an adult is not showing anger towards you does not necessarily mean that they are not angry with you. But this is not the case with children. So when children display any emotions, any unhelpful emotions, we have to seize it as an opportunity to help them out of that emotions. Because okay. of time, I will give the last one. I'll give you last one, then we will continue. But then we'll be revisiting some of them from time to time. It's very, very important. I want parents to note that we don't have to equate children's behavior to their full understanding of issues at stake. We don't have to equate children's behavior to their full understanding of issues at stake. We should never do that. If a child said, I will not go to school, and the mother says, oh, okay, me, I did not get anybody to take me to school, so if I'm trying to send you to school and you won't go, ah, it's not my fault. When you grow, you, it's your own palaver. No. The child telling you that I don't want to go to school does not necessarily mean that he doesn't want to go to school. He's telling you that maybe I, I want a new shoe. I want a new canvas to go to school. Because they don't have the words to express their emotions, they may use inappropriate words for us. So we shouldn't take their behavior as their full understanding of issues at stake. If a child knows that without education, I may struggle. I may not get the employment I'm looking for. Without education, I cannot be the doctor I'm aiming at. Without education, I cannot be a lawyer. If a child knows that, he won't tell you I will not go to school because of a simple misunderstanding. So when a child put up a behavior, don't think that he understands the outcome fully as you may do as an adult. That is, that may not help properly. Right. <laughs> so this is what I call a, a brief about children's emotions. Mm. Very, very important. Right. Now, let's just move into how do we raise emotional, intelligent children. Yes, sir. One of the things that we have to do in order to raise emotional, intelligent children is, is the fact that we should help them to identify and name their emotions. Uh -huh. First, we should help them yes, to identify and name their emotions and that of others. It's very, very important. If you are able to name something, at least you've gotten some knowledge of that particular thing. The world was able to name COVID-19. That means they know that A, B, C, D to E, when it comes together, will be qualified as COVID-19. Mm. So in order to live with emotions, in order to live with I'm a medicine. You should first know Ames' name. 
is very, very important, very simple and logic. Mm. Emotions, we should live with emotions like living with human beings. We should live with emotions like husbands. So each and everyone listening to me today, if you are a man, you should have an, a, a, a wife. Call that wife an emotions wife, emotional wife. Not necessarily your wife, but you are living with something called emotions and you must recognize that that emotion is a human being. So any man listening to us today must also believe and trust that you are uh, you are living with something called emotion and you must understand that it is a human being. Uh oh. Uh oh. Right. Things had stabilized for a while. Those of you who've been on for a while, you do know that uh, we have network access issues. PC went off for a bit. And I'm going to try and restore access. So bear with me. It's my job just to make sure that his guys have access when they've lost it. And when I've given them that, we continue with our discussions whilst we wait for him to come. You have to realize that what he's doing is courses that he teaches for fees. But he's agreed to come and he's agreed to do it for free on this platform. And I do hope that you recognize the wonderful opportunity it is to get this and to utilize this in your raising of the kids. It's a little gift to you. Aisha, we have to listen and we have to validate those feelings. A lot of us disregard and belittle their feelings is why they never tell us anything else going forward. We have to learn to accept. Even if we don't agree, we need to listen and validate the feelings and then we challenge which ones need to be challenged. But ignoring them totally, not listening and acknowledging the feelings is also a very dangerous thing to do. Welcome back. Hi, Gracie. <laughs> right, let's continue. Thank you. For, for, for us. <laughs> the network is troublesome today. It's fine. We will yes, manage. Williams, I remember when my younger brother did not want to go to school because he did not like his teacher's sandals. His teacher's sandals? How, which, when, who? <laughs> Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. That, that, that is how that is how powerful that is how powerful emotions are to children. That is how powerful emotions are to children. Are you getting my point? Uh, I will be very happy if a lot of mothers are listening to you, and um, they quickly have to enroll. Yeah. Uh, see you and and enroll for you to provide them some basics in emotions. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Yes. It's very yes. So the first thing is to help the child to identify and name emotions in himself or herself and that of others. Yeah. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. They lack vocabularies. They lack the words to describe emotions. So we need to help them have words for emotions. And one of the ways to do that is, is for you to name emotions for them. Mm. Name emotions for them. Kwame, have you seen your brother's face? He's very frustrated because you did not bath any for him to also have his turn. So he's now late for school. Yeah. Your brother is very frustrated. So when Kwame is looking at the brother's face, you know that, okay, this is how a frustrated face looks like. Kwame, when you took your brother's food, you know that he got angry, throwing about her hands uh, in the air. So Kwame is getting to know this. When you are watching film with them, you see, hey, that man is very excited. He's won the, 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 the race. You get him a So 
All these things are helping the children to verbalize emotions. Yeah. So that when they are experiencing it, they will be able to tell you. In the same way, when they also see it in somebody else, they will be able to identify it. Oh, that's very, awesome. very important. So we that need to help them to so name and ident identify and name emotions in themselves and others. Very, very important. But you see, secondly, that's one of the things that the other communities are secondly. But you see, I was just tagging on your point a little bit. You see, when our children are young, we don't really speak to them. When you go to the Caucasian community, they are very vocal with their kids. Oh, mommy is so angry. Oh, mommy is so sad. Oh, today mommy is tired. And they, they exaggerate some of these things. And I think sometimes a lot of us don't okay. understand why they do those things with very young kids. A very hungry caterpillar. There are so many books and there are so many things that work in this area, but a lot of us don't really recognize them. We, we read the books and we just read them as uh, just works of literature, and they are not. These are tools that should help us understand the task so that we are up to task, but a lot of us have no idea how to harness this and how to... So naming emotions, yeah, you'll find other people do it all the time. Sit on a naughty step because you have made mommy very frustrated. And it, it allows the kid to know when mommy is frustrated, the kind of voice mommy has, the kind of face mommy has. And the kid knows frustration. But for a lot of us, we don't even know the difference between frustration and anger. And if we are adults, we can't tell you the difference between them. We think frustration is anger, but it's not. It's not the same feeling. Hi, Taisha. Good. Hello. Hi, I'm here. There's a little bit of a delay, but yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, Chrissy, I can hear you. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. I can hear you. Yes. Good, good, good. So if if I heard you right, that means parents need to really be able to identify emotions very well. Mm. Absolutely. Good. Good, good, good. So as you right, yeah, as you rightly said, parents need to be able to know the right emotions at play. Very, very important. Mm. Very, very important. We have what we call the mind. Welcome back, Chrissy. 
Good, good. <laughs> so if I heard you right, it means parents themselves have difficulty in recognizing emotions. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, uh, it may not be today, but one of these days, we'll move into what we call the micro expressions. The oh. micro expressions that when, when somebody is angry, what are the small, small changes in the face that will exhibit that this person is angry, right? They can start to read about Paul Ekman. Paul Ekman. Paul Ekman is the mind or the brain behind lie detector. The lie detector, Paul Ekman, has been working with the CIA in America for so many years. He is an expert in micro expressions, mm. the small, small expressions in the face. The, the situation of the eyebrow will determine whether somebody is angry or not. If somebody is really happy, excited, and the person is laughing, then the chin must pop up. You must see the chin. No matter how small it is, the chin must pop up. So any smile that does not come with a chin popping up by this, you should be very careful. It may not be a, a proper one. So there are so many micro expressions in the face. Uh -huh. As you are laughing now, you can see the chin popping up brightly in the face. Right. Uh -huh. So any smile devoid of that, it means something wrong. So we have what we call the micro expressions, and it's very, very important that parents should master those things because you know the adults, the adults will do everything possible to hide emotions. Mm. Because in this part of the world, we will be made to believe that emotions are not that good. Well, it's, so it's, if somebody is frustrated, he wants to hide it. If somebody is disappointed, he wants to put up like I'm the man. Uh -huh. So most of the time we try to hide it. So the only way you can read advanced emotions is to master what the body language is speaking. It's very, your very important. The body language is speaking most of the time. We the research have shown that given the verbal language and the body language, we will depend solely or we will take a decision mainly based on the body language more than the mere words. Because yeah. people can manipulate their words, but the body will, will give them out from time to time. It's very yeah. difficult to control the body. Absolutely. Especially... So I mean it's, it's, it's good that uh, parents will really master some of the things. Now, we should also help children normalize emotions. Ooh. Very, very important. How, how do we raise emotional intelligent children? Help them to identify and name emotions in themselves and others. Secondly, we should help kids, we should help children Oh, what happened again? Right, guys, you will have to bear with me. Network issues, when Quincy is able to reestablish report to you, but he's throwing nuggets. Nuggets, I hope you are uh, accessing. Hello, Quincy, can you hear us? No? All right, so let's go. What I have done on the screen is a book by the author he uh, just recommended, Paul Ekman. This book I have put out is written by Paul Ekman, and let me have a look and see who else the other author is. It's written by Paul Ekman and Wallace Friesen. Paul Ekman and Wallace Friesen. It's an interesting book. It's called Unmasking the Face. Unmasking the Face. Those of you who are interested in reading, those of you who are interested in pushing your boundaries, the boundaries of your knowledge, I recommend that you get that book if you are interested in how people present themselves, what the little tweaks in the body actually mean, 
when I smile, it doesn't really mean anything. Those who know me know that I have a few different smiles. There are smiles like this particular one. And it's the whole face smiling. My eyes are gleaming. And you know that that's a genuine smile. And there are times that I smile and there is that hard nut look in my eye. They don't mean the same thing. There are times when I smile and my lips barely move and they stay static, means something else. There are times when I train myself to pull out my chin because some of you know about the chin and you will begin to look out for it and I will intentionally stick it out. Yeah. But if you really look closely at my eyes and the twitching behind my eyelids and you pay attention to some small little things, it is possible for you to cut through the nonsense and to know when I am genuinely smiling and when I am putting on smiling. When I'm putting on smiling, you might want to be aware of it. And then you might want to find out why I will put up a smile and not necessarily be feeling it. Maybe I am masking an emotion that you need to unpick. You might want to confront it openly or you might just want to be aware of it and bear that in mind in your interactions with me. You might decide to give me a bit of distance to work through an issue because you clearly can see my jawline twitching. You can see my eyelids twitching. Sometimes I don't want to smile, but you can see the little quiver of my lips in the corners. These things all tell you a lot of things about what a person is really feeling. Welcome back, Chrissy. Can you hear it? Yeah, Can thank you. <laughs> All right. <Too> <laughs> So I was talking about helping children to normalize emotions. We should help children to normalize. Yes, I can hear you. OK. Yes, please continue. Good. Good. So we need to help children to normalize emotions. That simply means that when children are angry, when children are frustrated, we should put up a behavior that will let them know that this is normal, it's something that is with human beings. But what is not good is for you to put up a behavior that is unwanted. Mm. So the issue is we don't have to treat children's emotions like an offensive something, mm. right? Children's emotions shouldn't be a criminal offense mm. that a child is angry. So we've never heard of that before. We, 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 it's, it's a crime. It's a crime to be frustrated. It's a crime to be angry. No, let the child know that if you know something, I also sometimes get frustrated. You know, when this happened, when I have a problem with my engine, giving me a consistent breakdown, you could see that I was frustrated throughout the day. So children get to know that frustration is part of life. Then you use that to teach them what we call the coping skills. The coping skills. Use that opportunity to teach them coping skills, not necessarily rendering them as criminals or as illegal.
they do. Hello, Bessie. <laughs> Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know whether you heard me. Can you recap my last uh, statement so that? The last statement was here teaching them coping skills and mechanisms. Good, good, good. So let's let us uh, allow the children to feel free to, to, to display emotions because it's very, very important. How boring emotions have, uh, uh, how do you call it, has a serious implications on our health. Yes, when people don't display emotions, but then we should help them to display right emotions, right outcomes. That is the most important. But we don't have to suppress them, right? So I want us to take note that we should help children to manage emotions, but that management should come after understanding of children's emotions. Mm. We should understand children's emotions before we help them. Very, very important. Very, very important. So we should normalize emotions for them. We don't have to criminalize their emotions that you don't have any uh, a reason to get angry. No, that is not the case. When we do that, then we are treating them as less humans. But they are not lesser human because they are children. No, that is, that is not the, the, the point. Very, very important. Now, we should also discuss and express emotions with them. Very, very important. You can, when they are watching a film, when they are watching a film, you can discuss emotions with them. That's why you see, when this happened, the man was angry. And because he couldn't manage his emotions well, he started fighting with the, man, with the other man, and now the police has come in. Mm. It's very, very important. Discuss emotions and their outcomes with them. And you'll be advising them what to do when they face similar situations. Okay, guys, you you know how it goes. So anyway, Quasi has disappeared again. He'll be back. Let me check that you can hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. So good stuff. He'll be back. Be patient. We are talking through. He is really giving us some free gifts. It's very important that uh, those of you who need to catch this, do catch it, and he's back. Uh, uh, wow, wow. Good. We are resilient, you see. We sure are. We sure are. <laughs> it's one of the areas we look in the later days. Very how important. Do we, how do we build resilience in children? Very, very this important. This is why we are the program, right? If you weren't resilient, yeah. join it. You'd have yeah. given up by now. Yeah. If I panic yeah. and disappear, we will not have a show. The yeah. next <laughs> I'm making it work. No matter what. Good. No matter good. what. Good. good. So, these are very important emotional uh, skills that we need to let the children acquire because if we let them know that Berman Sue, right? Somebody put that example there, but it gets to a time Berman must sue. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. It gets to a time that Berman must sue. So 
that idea of Burma and Su is, 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 is not totally uh, true. Nope. You, you, you're getting my point. Yes. What, what is important is that you don't have to cry over something and then it ends you up in a negative way. But for the cry, sometimes it's, it, there's the need for you to cry. Yes. You get to my point. Yeah. If you lose your mom and you don't cry, yes. when would you cry again? That yes, means you, you have no more cry in the world again to cry. Yes. So we lose things that make us cry. But we don't cry and become drunkards. We don't cry and, and, and take to the streets. We cry as a way to relieve ourselves of that particular loss and pain. Then we bounce back as humans. So this brings us to the point that emotions in itself are not bad, but behaviors after the emotions could be bad or yeah. unhelpful. Very, yeah. very important. You don't just get up to be angry. You don't just get up to be frustrated. So being frustrated is not bad. But don't get frustrated and get drunk to the point that you develop a disease out of that. That is, that is it. It's very, very important. So uh, let's also practice brain rewiring with the children. One of the emotional skills that we need to give to children or help them to build is what we call brain rewiring. Which one is that? Rewiring. Which one is rewiring? How do we rewire brain? Yes, this is the conscious. Yes, yes, this is the conscious effort to replace irrational thought with rational thinking. Very, very important. This is the ability to replace irrational thought with rational thought. I will go further to explain. It's Please. very, very important. That small voice in our head, that part of the brain that looks for the negativities, it always want to empower us on all that we have to do. So anything that you start to do, that small voice will be speaking to you. Yeah. So you could be there, you have a very brilliant idea. You have done your feasibility studies. Mm. You have all the technical issues resolved. But then something keep on telling you that you fail when you do it. Yeah. You can't be successful. Who will interview you? Hey. Who will buy into this idea? Who is your mother? Who are your parents? Are they lawyers? Are you living in Trasaco? Are you living uh, at, uh, how do you call it, East Legon? Yeah. Was your father a lawyer? So yeah. all these things come into your head to battle you for things that are really not important to your success at that point in time. So what you have to do is to consciously delete those negativity in your head by telling yourself, I've done this, I was successful, I did it, I had a challenge, but I still broke through. Mm. I'm sure I can do it now. I'm sure I'll be successful at this one too. And it has its basis in the Bible. Okay. The rewiring has its basis in the Bible. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Okay. Let the poor say, I am rich. Yeah. Why would the poor all of a sudden say, I am rich? Right? When you do that, you put the positive synopsis in the brain. And the right chemicals will be released for you to move into action. Yeah. Very, very, very important. Absolutely. Right? Positive chemicals like the dopamine will be released for you to feel happy, excited, that confidence about yourself, then you move into action. So you need to practice brain rewiring with the children. Kwame, I knew the resource was not the brain. 
Yes, I know the result was not the best, but let me tell you something. I have confidence in you. I trust you. I know next semester you will do well. Mm -hmm. So that Kwame will now remove that negativity in the head mm -hmm. and believe that I can do better. Very, very important. We need to practice brain rewiring with them. We also need to practice gratitude. Being content with whatever we have is one of the ways to build an emotionally intelligent child. Any child that sees what he or she possesses, the status of the parents, where they are living, the school he's attending, if any child sees that one as inadequate, it has a serious implications on the child's ability to withstand the test of time. So what we have to do is to ensure that children are content with whatever we have as parents. Very, very important. Being good in school has nothing to do with your father living in the horse mansion. It has nothing to do with that at all. So far as you are in the school, subjected or you are given the same level ground with other children, you have no complaint to say that you are living in a slum area and somebody is living in Trasaco in Ghana, so the person should perform better than you. There's no linkage like that. It can only have negative effects on the child when the child ceases that as a limitation. So yeah. what we have to teach children yeah. is to be grateful for whatever they have. Very, very important. Remember when God met Moses in the wilderness, he asked him, how do I get back to Pharaoh? That is where I was living, in the palace. The security mm -hmm. men are there. And God asked him, what is in your hand? And Moses said, it's a stick. But God proved to him that it's not a stick. This is what you are going to use to liberate my people from the bondage. Mm -hmm. So whatever we have as parents, whatever we have as children, must be appreciated. And that will form the basis for our children's strength in the future. Very, very important. We need to be content. We need, how do we become, how do we teach children to become content with what they have? Children can listen to us. They listen to us. They understand us. They appreciate us. So when we have time to speak to them, explain, their, uh, explain our situations to them, they have the ability at that level to understand that Kwame, you know something, I cannot buy this, but alternatively, I can buy this because you know where I am working, this is my pay. If I take this thing out of that, this is how much I am left. Let the children understand us. We are not disgracing ourselves before them. We are, make, we are giving them the necessary data to help them take a decision. But who are we deciding if we are not truthful to the children? Very, very important. This will move us to the next thing I want us to talk about. Let's build trust for the children. We must build trust for the children. How do we build trust for the children and how do we build trust in the children. Very, very important. Now, when there is no trust, nothing meaningful can be achieved. Wow. Most of the work we do, they pay us, the fastest time they pay you maybe a week, sometimes in a month. So for you to even be gainfully employed, you must have a trust that my employer can pay me at the end of the month. <laughs> Why don't we say that I'm not that sure, so I won't go. You go for the whole month, hoping and trusting that you'll be paid at the end of the month. So yeah. without trust, nothing moves. So one of the things that we have to make sure that we've built it out for the children and help the children to cultivate that habit is trust. Very, very, very important. Now, to the parents, when you build trust in the children, or when the children have trust in you, you are giving to the children two most important things. 
And I want parents to take notes here. When you have the ability to build trust in the children, if the children trust you, you are giving them two most important things here. First, you are giving them a person for life. You are giving them a person for life. That means you are telling them that you'll be there for them in times of difficulties, challenges, at any point in time, unless you are dead. Yes, when you groom your children very well, that is the confidence they have in you, that no matter what happened to us, our dad and mom are for us. They will be there for us until they do us apart. Trust. The second thing you are giving them is that you are giving them a lasting lesson. A lasting lesson. Yes. A lesson that you must trust. Even in, in collaboration, trust. So anybody that lacks trust is not going anywhere. <laughs> How would you not Yes. How would you not trust your wife and you live in abroad and you don't trust your wife? You will be in trouble. You better come home and join us. You come home once in a year. You come home three months. How would you trust even where you save your money? What shows that the bank will not go down in five years? So trust, without trust, nobody. Come on, not a good time to, for this to happen. Right, Retario, I'm telling you, it's very important. I am taking my nuggets, and I do hope that the rest of you are also taking your seats right back. Excellent. Good. So how do you build, how do you build this trust with the children? Yeah. Right. When you promise them, when you promise them, the parents should listen. When you promise them, and something happened that you can't fulfill, immediately explain to them why you think you will not be able to do that. Very, very important. Kwame, I will buy you the laptop at the end of the month. Close to the end of the month, the grandma was taken sick, and you need to spend some money there. Quickly, go back to Kwame and explain immediately that Kwame, because of this and that, I may not be able to what, to do that. Mm. Explain yourself every day. Every step of the way, explain yourself. Every step of the way, explain yourself. If you are even going to punish them, explain to them the reason why you are punishing them. Although you may think that they know that they've done something wrong, still explain to them that because of ABCD, I want to punish you. I want you to do this because of what you did. Explaining yourself to them is a way of building a trust. Secondly, when they confide in you and they don't want others to know, keep it secret for them. Very, very important. When they confide in you, so far as it has no negative implications on the others, keep their conversation that they wanted to remain secret or confidential. Let it remain confidential for them, for their sake. You are building a trust. You are building a trust. When you have any challenge that is battling you and you think at their level, they need to know, let them know. Let them know because sometimes they may be able to observe that our mother is not happy, but you want to hide it from them. You are breaking their trust because they are not small. They are not that small. They are not, <laughs> they are not too, they are not that baby to read any gestures. They are so not very, very important. Crazy, you couldn't have said it at this as a right time. It is so important. So, my kids and I am always hands on with them. I play with them, I do everything with them. But obviously, recently, since I've been working on the channel, 
and I will get up in the morning, I'll be filming a video. I need them to do things around, but I'll sit down and film. And then there will be editing and whatnot. So maybe five, six weeks ago, my son comes and he says, have you got time for us? I'm like, yeah. He says, no, 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 not superficial time. Have you really got proper time for us? I'm like, hey, I'm always accessible. He says, no, not recently, not recently. <laughs> so I sat with them, I explained to them what I'm actually trying to do with the camera, what I'm trying to build, the reasons why it is important I do it now, so that come September, when everything kicks off, I don't need to go out uh, as often as I used to, or I can spend some more time at home. So we are investing now, so that when research becomes serious it doesn't really impact us that much negatively Hello, partner. but you know when we start and we have that conversation and kindly understood it the kids themselves well you will find him he's now behind the computer most of the day trying to work out a video technique or to find something on Photoshop or on the other things that we use for my stuff and he, he is building competence so he can help ease my burden and I would not have even thought about it until that, you have to be honest with them and you have to tell them, look, yeah, I know you need me right now, but I'm not available for this reason. And usually when you take time to explain to them, they will get you, they will. But uh, if you assume that they if you think that they are too young, if you can't share with them, then you are actually asking for trouble. You are really asking for trouble. That, that is it. It's, it's, if you apply to them, they would have known. They would take it where they know you are lying. Yeah. And in that level, you are not building that trust. Is it? No, not when you, yes, yes. And one of the ways to also build trust is that sometimes daddy wants to be there. Daddy wants to punish them. Daddy wants to reward some benefit from them. They will come and confine you to your mom, you know, I won't do that again. I won't do that. Please speak to daddy for me. You must make sure that you speak to daddy to stop. Yeah. No matter the situation. When that happens, they have the trust in the mother. Yeah. So when they go out there and they have a challenge, they know that when we tell our mother, our mother has a solution for us. Most of the time, we don't do that. And when they go out there and they have a challenge, they don't have a way to talk to us. They don't have a way to speak to us. And we turn around to blame them. Yeah. Why do we turn around to meet yeah. them? We have failed in the first place by not building trust in them. They don't trust us. That yeah. is one of the very yeah. difficult things that we have to do. So you trust, you build trust in them, and what is happening is that you give them a person for life and a lesson for life. A lesson is that you need to trust. You need to trust. You need to trust. You need to trust. He so, is... It is a problem. Listen, the trust thing, let me add to this. It's not just about doing things and saying things and whatnot. Listen, your kids need to have the confidence that you have the ability to bail them out. Mm. You really do need to know that you are capable of helping them when they need it. If it's a problem with school, they will never speak to you if they don't think you can fix it. They will never tell you. Mm. If they think it's a if your kids begin to think you are incompetent, that's right, it's gone. It's gone. If you want your kids to have an open channel of communication, the first thing you're gonna to have to learn to absorb is that knowledge with your children that you are very competent. That even if you don't have a skill immediately, you will acquire it in the shortest possible time. Mm -hmm. come to you with this, okay, mom can fix it. She can. Mm -hmm. Mom will find a way. Mm -hmm. will make it better. Mm -hmm. That comes from, from you displaying that you are competent. It, that's important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very, very, very good, very good uh, exposition uh, from you. Now, there's one thing I also want us to take note of that, and I, I want the parent to pay attention to this particular one. Modeling. Modeling. 
we need to model what we want to see in the children. We need to model what we want to see in the children. If you want the children to be respectful, respect them. Treat them with respect. If you want the children to show kindness, treat them with kindness. Show them compassion. Show their mother respect. Show their mother compassion. There is no any other power to educate children than from them learning from you. When they learn from you, they have no headache. They have no challenge in that. This is not theory. This is not asking them to read books. This is not inspiration. This is, this is not motivation, it's an inspiration. They see you do it and it is easy for them. The bottom line is that emotions are contagious. Emotions are like germs, they are like viruses. They will infect anybody that comes close to you. It is very easy for you to transfer emotions to others. Very simple. So the power to build emotional intelligent children is for you to model the right competencies for life. This is very, very important. You want your child to be respectful. Don't go to bed and eat sandwich and expect that they will be respectful automatically. No, they are open to a lot of things. Which one do they choose? They choose what they see their parents doing. They choose what they see their father doing. And it's a way of even building the very first block for children, confidence. One of the ways to build the very first block for emotional intelligent children, which is building their confidence, is for the mother or the parents or the guidance or the teacher to what? To model what they want to see in their children. If you are timid, I'm afraid your child is coming as the most timid, if there's that word. If you are somebody who doesn't take initiative, be ready. If you are not lucky, your child will not be taking any initiative. Well, first and foremost, they learn from you. Mm. Model the right competencies for them. That is why when you are angry with the dad or the mom, don't display that unhelpful emotions before them. When you are fighting and insulting your wife and they are coming, swallow that insult and wait for when they are not there. Because if you do that, they pick it as normal. They will take it as the gospel truth and they will be living with it. Very, very important. We need to model. What do you want to see in the children? What are you doing? So I will put down this question. It's not about what you want to see in the children. It's more about what you are doing. That is the most important. Yes. Don't worry about what you want to see in the children. Concentrate on what you are doing. So if you model the right competencies, the children have no problem. Who taught the child how to insult? They, when they were born, they don't know how to insult. They don't know that somebody is stupid. They don't know that somebody is lazy. We taught them. So anything that will teach them at that age, and that is the developmental stage, the stage that they acquire the needed skills. This is what that is why emotional intelligence is so important for the children and for that matter for the parent because when they miss it it's a disaster mm. when they miss it it's a disaster when you go with it you have no problem very very important children will be very kind when they are treated with that kindness children will be very respectful when they are treated with that respect so they go out there and display all these competencies for them, for, 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 for others to, to, to know. Very, very important. Build confidence in the children. 
Any child that lacks confidence is not going anywhere. And he or she will go to have a challenge in life. Even a confident to say, I have agreed to love you, I have agreed to go into a relationship with you, is a confidence. How do you build confidence in these children? Very, very important. If you don't have confidence, you, you, you will forever remain single. Mr. P.O.P. <laughs> That's the Mr. P.O.P. syndrome, isn't it? I mean, see, yes. you are not yes. confident, you are afraid of failure. When you are not confident, you are afraid of rejection. When you are mm. confident, it's a 50 50 chance and you can take it. Mm. And you are likely mm. to do more things because you are not held back by fear. Mm. People who are not confident, they are so afraid of failure that they always fail because they never mm. Mm. If you are not that scared of failure, you are likely to try things and you are likely to succeed in some of them. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, Aisha. Mm. Amazing. He yeah. is making some serious mm. points. Mm. The those of you who are watching, those who come back and watch, yes, get over the fear of rejection. My mom always says that. The answer is no by default. No, you mm. can't do it. By not asking, you are guaranteeing a no. Mm. So right now, if they say no, they've already told you the default answer anyway, but you might surprise mm. yourself. It might be a yes. Mm. That's when you mm. win. That thing has always been mm. in my head. Every time mm. a yes or no situation, I will ask you anyway. What else would you say apart from no? Mm. And if you say no, okay, say no anyway, it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> but there's some. What if he says no? Well, if he says no, he said no. That's all that's happened. If a person says mm. no. But what if, what if, and I'm like, well, if the person says no, that's all they said, no, get over it, no. But what if they say yes? Well, what if they say yes? Don't you want to find out? Well, I do. I want to find out for sure. Good. Good. One other thing I want us to do is that uh, we should play with the children. Ooh. Play with them. Yes. Play with them. It has a serious implication on building social and emotional skills. Play with the children. For instance, let's take football. Let's take football. And let's see the lessons in football for children. Now, when there's a penalty, the keeper who have uh, 10 people supporting him, to make the, the post save has now uh, only himself, mm. right? So what does that teach us? It teaches about resilience. Mm. It teaches about optimism. Mm. It teaches us about confidence. So that when they have a penalty, it is left with you and God. It is left with you and your maker. It's either goal or you got in it. But keepers don't run away from the goalpost because it's a penalty. I've not seen that before. No keeper, no matter, even myself, I will not run away. If you put me in the goalpost for Ghana Blasters and there's a penalty, how can I run away? I will stay in and do something. You get to my point. For all you know, somebody will be, will be, will have a, will do a mistake and then the ball will go off. Yeah. So, a penalty in a football teaches the children about resilience and optimism, a hope for the future, mm. hopeful in a brighter future. Because everything shows that the person can score you easily. Nobody is there to support you. You are left alone and you are not kicking, you are to save. You don't know which way is going. So how would you have to be in the goalpost? That is how life is. We get to a time in our lives we are left alone in the goalposts of life challenges. Mm. Do we help ourselves or do we try and see if we can get the hold of the ball? Very, very important. What does offside tell us? When there's an offside, it tells you that cheating is not good. You don't need to cheat to be on top. 
You don't need to cheat in a relationship. You don't need to cheat when you are in a team. Very, very important. When we have that kind of dead ball, right? That kind of dead ball, and they call one player from here, one player from here. You see the referee holding the ball. The referee is teaching about calmness. We need to remain calm. I want calm to return to the pitch. If, if he doesn't see that that calm is achieved and somebody plays it, there will be another foul. Mm. So playing with the children in all these games, every game has its own way of building a particular social and emotional skills in children. So building an emotionally intelligent children should not be devoid of play. This is very, very important. What kind of game are you enjoying with the children? If you move into cricket, you see a whole lot of lessons in cricket. If you move into boxing, you see a whole lot of lessons in boxing. All these things are a way to ensure that a particular skills are built in the children. Now, when you also play with children, what you are doing is that you are creating that kind of freedom that they will be able to come to you at any point in time. There's no bridge. There's no bridge between you and them. And that is very, very important for our old age. When we have grown and our children don't call us, our children don't relate to us, then we tend to blame them. But in their infancy, that kind of play was not there. So you, you did not build that bridge. You created a bridge yourself. You never smile with them. When you come from work, you never discuss anything with them. After work, discuss with them what you think they need to know. For instance, your boss, your birthday, your boss took you out to a very nice restaurant. What prevents you to share this with them when you come home? But when you come home, you remove your shirt, you remove your this thing straight into the bath, you have your dinner or whatever, that is the end of it. There's nothing like communicating with them when you came home. So when they also grow old, what they, what they cherish is that our mother, our father give us money and that was the end. So let us also send him money. Let us also buy what he needs for you. But if they do all these things and they are not able to connect to you on an emotional level, Hi. there is a serious gap. Very, very important. So a parent should not think that I am providing, I am providing. But Hi. even the gap, emotional connectivity, you are creating a gap for yourself. And you live to reap what you sow. So speak to them, get interested in their friends. Love what they love, appreciate what they appreciate, welcome what they believe in, drive them towards their goal. When you do that, they will also grow to believe what you believe in. They will grow to understand you because you have understood them when they were young. So when you also grow and you are complaining that they don't call me, I don't hear from them, they think that ah, we send him money, we send some money. What is this old man talking about? Yes, that is what you did when they were kids. You did not build that kind of relationship with yes. them. After you of every day, connect to them on their original level. You have gone there. And because we've gone there, we we'll all go there. You have gone there. So mm. it's Father's Day. Mm. And mm. my friends are in my ears. It's quiet on Father's Day. Nobody's sharing anything. I'm like, look on Facebook. The people whose fathers were fathers have seen their messages already. Mm. A lot of you are mm. not fathers, you are tyrants in the home. Mm. And that's why I said that mm. one was. when Dada comes, everybody mm. runs out of skeleton. That person is a tyrant. Who mm. wants to spend time with a tyrant? Mm. Who mm. wants to spend time with a tyrant? Mm. And so mm. you paid for their school fees and you bought food for them. Mm. When they also start working, they will throw money at you and that's it. Mm. There are some homes that when the kids arrive, mm. the mother has mm. to say, Papa, we're there, we're there. Mm. That greeting is alien even to the kids, just the greeting. 
it is awkward. Mm. You, you greet him. That's mm. it. That's the thing to say. So the kids mm. don't want to They will send you a text mm. message because at least that one is one sentence. But if they come to sit with you, they will have to chat. There is nothing to say to you. They don't know what you like. They don't know what you believe. They don't know where you stand. Mm. You are a stranger in your home. So yes, it is Kwesi's mm. fault. I'm going there, so I'm also going there. Mm. Richie, I am going there mm. for time. A lot of you, when you raise your kids, you don't know that you are also preparing for how the kids will treat you in your old age. Ignore mm. them today and they will ignore you right back. With mm. hope or resources from them, they will pay you back in your own point. Mm. Have affection for them and they will have some for you. And if you've not built affection by the time the kids are 16, 18, it is too late for you. It is harsh. You will have to go back mm. and try to reconstruct and try to manage. But if the kids leave home and you don't have a relationship with them, a rock solid relationship with them, there is nothing left. The only thing you will get from them is charity. That's it. Mm. So it's crazy who went there, not me, but I had to go in there too. Mm. <laughs> good, good. No. There is another thing I want us to take note, which is very, very important. You see, most of the time, people that have made it in life have the notion or the perception that I don't want my children to go through the same thing. Now, yes, I want to be quick to add that we are not talking about unnecessary punishment, torture, that military type of something, no. But then allow your children to go through the normal human challenges. Very, very important. There are challenges in life, no matter who you are, you go through it. So allow children to experience those ones as a human being. I don't think there's anybody who is so wealthy in this world. Right? I know Dubai, you have a lot of money there. Eh? Your, your, your kids, <laughs> they have a lot of money. They sit on gold and all those things. I don't think any of their child or any of their, 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 their sons at the age of 15 or 20 will still need to be back. No. No. Yes. That means that you must teach the child how to bath. So there are certain things in life, no matter how rich you are, no matter who you are, allow the children to go through. Allow them to what? experience. A child must know how to wash the dishes. He must know how to wash his own clothes, if not that of his siblings. He must know basic cooking. As a child, he must know that there are, there are, there are certain things in life you can simply not avoid them. He must know how to brush the teeth very well. He must know how to do a whole lot. Now, any attempt to take these things away from children, you are not building them for the future. And for that matter, you are not making them emotionally intelligent enough for life. Children must be allowed. This is what we call the minimum stress. The minimum stress. Any child that knows that if I sleep from 8 in the evening to 12 afternoon next day and nobody will talk, that child will sleep. That will happen. That child will sleep. But is that a normal life? Can you go to work always at 12 if you are not doing your own job or you are not your own CEO? If even you are your own CEO, there are times that you have to stay late and there are times that you have to go early. So let the child go through the normal length of sleep. Let the child wake up when there's the need for him to wake up. So you provide the minimum stress for the child to become a human being. We have a lot of rich people in the system whose their children have grown to become a challenge to them. And they blame their children. When they were in their mother's womb, they did not have that character. When they were in their mother's womb, this is not what they believed in. Somebody made them to believe in that the world is so cheap and easy that I can sleep and get everything done for me. It's a serious mistake. This is the reason why most of the time, some of us that live with other people, we tend not to do well in life. There are so many people 
because those people may be thinking that you have to do everything because you are you are with them as a maid. They leave their child. Before you realize that maid has become somebody in life and the child is struggling. Because like, if why? you mm. have given the maid, so my mom was one of those funny people. When people lived with us, it was only in my mom's home that I, the child of the house, will have to serve uh, those who were in the house. I've said this a few times, and it really didn't make any sense to me. I thought my mom was mad. Mm. There are other people here. This is my mom, my parents' home. I, I should be the princess mm. in this, but she will not mm. let me be the princess in this home. Mm. She will chase mm. other people who mm. sleep. She didn't really give a hoot. Mm. The one person mm. who was asleep was me. There was no dad about mm. there was in my house, I said that one. But as a kid, I did. But you know what I've actually learned? Mm -hmm. All the skills that were available to be learned were learned by me. Mm -hmm. The thing to see things through and to force through things with what I learned. I mm -hmm. realized my mom had lived with other people, and my mom was one of those mm -hmm. people who took what she got from that episode and did much better for herself. And so she knew exactly why she did better and why her, her, her work ethic was what it was. And she was not going to have the same thing happen to me. And as a child, I thought it was stressful. No, she would not let me sleep. Nobody sleeping. No, she would not let me sleep. She was trying to have to learn the ethic that it was going to me. And she used to say about money. A lot of us don't teach our kids financial discipline. We think that we are helping them have an easy life. Whatever they ask you give, you never really learn how to earn. They never really learn how to manage. And so we've got to be instrumental in creating opportunities for children to learn money. We will be a piece of life. I just wanted to do that with okay. Good. So they, they need to know the realities of life. Very, very important. They need to know that there are set, there's no uh, shortcut to most of the things that they, 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 they normally believe that it's a shortcut, right? So one of the other things I want us to uh, really ponder over is the fact that we should help children to build what I call teamwork. Teamwork is very, very important. This is one of the most important skills that should be taught by every parent. Teamwork, very, very important. Teamwork is very, very important because in life, nobody does it alone. Nobody go through the life journey alone. It's never possible. Presidents have aides. Presidents have personal assistants. See where renowned CEOs have personal assistants. They have secretaries. So you don't get to any situation in life and you think you can do it alone. That is not possible. If that is the case, then working in a team should be one of the most important skills that we should ever help children to develop. How do we do this basically? Now in the house, you must make sure that you give children a task that each and everyone will play a role in making sure that the task is completed. It's very, very important. Now, in a simple washing of dishes, what you can do is to ensure that you can, if there are two, tell them one will wash it, one, one will, will, will clean it, one will wash it, and then put it somewhere. Meanwhile, one person can do the uh, dish cleaning of the dishes or the cooking intestines, but because you want to promote that kind of teamwork, ability to join together, ability to start off from where somebody left off, is one of the critical skills in life. And we need to start building it for the children, we need to build it in the children, put them in a way, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an assignment. That ensures that everybody has a role to play to ensure the outcome is achieved. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. 
There are situations that you allow them to work independently, but it got to a time that you also need to put them together for them to learn that in life is all about teamwork. In life is all about your ability to coexist with other people. Very, very important. It is something that we don't need to downplay it. It's very, very important. Now, we also need good. <laughs> I will keep you for the whole day. And I can see from the comments that everybody is throwing in, but listen, I asked uh, Chrissy that we will last an hour and a half. I don't think he's checked, Chrissy. We are coming, we've gone past two and a half. It's a long wow. walk. <laughs> you remember we were chatting about it before? Good. <laughs> the time goes very quickly. We go very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think we play fair. I will let Chrissy mm -hmm. wrap up the important bits maybe we might do a part two of this topic because we need to finish off mm -hmm. um yeah. that, what would also be a helpful thing is maybe to look into a webinar scenario not just open facebook where we have the webinar people come in and interact and learn and yeah. get uh, resources so maybe i'll yeah. talk to you on the side and see if we can put uh, together a webinar so you can come in and you can have a handouts and a few things to give you, to help you uh, crystallize what is being said and so on. But listen, when we do a webinar and we make those extra resources and whatnot, it takes time. So in order to come and enjoy the webinar, you've got to be willing to make some financial contributions at the time, okay? The Facebook one, we've just given almost three hours of solid, rock solid time. For those who are facing that, but yeah, let me know if you might be interested webinar if i get enough responses and people might be interested then pc and i will discuss it and try and put it on in the next week we can help yeah oh he will come with Harry, oh, don't worry i'm trying to get him to come regularly but we will not be able to cover in depth on the facebook live these are teasers when the teaser works for you you want more detail you have to be willing to invest to be able to access the extra uh, information. So I can ask Chrissy to sit down and make me a handout. It will take him three hours to work. So you have to be willing. It doesn't feel like two hours. We are heading towards three hours. It's two hours, 37. So we've gone past two and a half. You just started. Ah, you want the dessert. You don't have to wait for the dessert. So let me know if you might be interested in the webinar. If I get 10, 15 people interested in it, we will organize it. And then it will be where you sitting down to create the uh, handouts which will be given to you in the webinar, which you can utilize as a little manual. Help yourself uh, and help your children. You started off work. Go all right. Whenever you have time, come back and rework the rest of it. That's no problem. But let me know if you might be interested. Then we will put it on. Okay, so let's wrap this up for today and maybe next week we will go to a different topic. We will do the part two of this one. Good, good, good. Thank you very much. Uh, briefly, one or, one or two things I'll add, then we will call it off today. And I think your suggestion of webinar is not that bad. Uh, I'm always ready to, I mean, move into an area like this. Uh, when we even get five people, we are we are ready to go. That is it. We can always not wait for everybody to get on board. People that will watch this, people that are seeing this as very important. You see, the Bible said, what you sow is what you reap. Yeah. Most of the time, we are having challenges with our children because yeah. of these skills. Yeah. Yes, because of these skills. And last week, I remember I told you that uh, research has shown that to be successful in life is all about your social and emotional skills. Yes. Very, very important. And you know, our parents, right, were, were having some very good social and emotional skills. Look at what your mom did yeah. for you. Oh, she was sensational. Now, yes, yes. Some years ago, when, when you go back home, you have your grandma teaching you some of these skills in the house. 
Yeah. Now, you can't go and bring your ma in the village to come and live with you. So you carry the child to school, 6 a.m. You go and carry them, 6 p.m. Who teaches them if the teacher is not well equipped? So what I'm urging the parents yeah. Have time. Come again. Even if the teacher, she does not have time, it's the simple truth, really. <laughs> so we as parents need to take on this because it's they, they are ours. Yeah. You, you, you get your point. Yes, and that is the gap. That is the gap. You are lucky now. If you fail to give it to the children, see what you have done to them. Yeah. You, you, you get my point. Huh. Now. You are there praising your mother. Oh, yeah. Right? Somebody sent me something. Uh, uh, I don't know whether I can find it, but let me see if I can remember it. He said, uh, we are thanking the fathers today, right? But then, by the time another child will thank you as a father, you would have known, you would have realized that you were not mistaken. Mm. But most of the time, your mother is doing that. You think your mother is difficult, is worrying you. So you'll be blaming her or blaming him. By the time you say, Thank you, daddy, then your child is also blaming you that you are not good. You don't okay. like me. You, you, you have you had time to father to be So we need to insist now. You, you get to my point. And, and, and I call this. I call this an emotional, intelligent, revolutionary push. No matter how few people we get here, yeah, they will take the message out. Now, my challenge to the parent is that it's not about the air condition that the child is sitting in in the Montessori. It's not about the swimming pool that the child is sitting in uh, swimming. <laughs> it's not about those lodges. You see, in our next session, I'll bring a football, a football, two footballs. Then after the demonstration, they will tell me what have made the other one different. It is only what is in you that can help you to stand the test of time. And the world is like going to the football pitch. Yes, the referee will get the ball and will be hitting the ball on the pitch, asking the ball, are you ready for life? Ronaldo is here. Messi is here. Can you stand there? When the ball is able to bounce back, it tells you that that ball is ready for life. It is what is within the children that will allow them to stand the test of time. So what are you putting into the children is the most important. Now, the last thing I will leave with the parent is that we should label rightly. We should label rightly. When you dislabel, you disenable it. So we should label rightly. We should label rightly. If even a child is stopping, don't speak into the ear that you are stopping. Do whatever you do to correct that stupidity. Don't say into the ear that you are stopping. You are too dumb. You are not brilliant like your brother. You are not doing well like your sister. Don't say those words. Don't dislabel to this uh, this enabled the children wrong label will bring out wrong children it's never good for them to hear that you may know that what is doing is stupidity don't say into the ear if there's a way to correct that you do that very very important miss Labeling is this enabling. I think we can end here <laughs> and probably do the part two. Uh, we, we, it's unfortunate there have been some breaks, but uh, we'll work on no, uh, the next. No, because it's part yeah. of what we are doing. We need people to be resilient. That's life. Yeah. There is no sugar yeah. for anybody. In this life, things happen. And I was, my friend was chatting to me. My friend said, end, end, end the program. When everything is fine, you come back home. And I'm like, why am I ending the program? Yeah, you know, what would you say to the people? And I, I, I can chat to them. These are my audience. I talk to them all the time. So whether they see, I will engage them. And so we 
continued for a bit and then she texted me, oh my god you are good it's almost like you know what you're doing all right <laughs> because i do know what I, oh wow if it was me i would end it immediately i, I would be panicking <laughs> know what to say yeah, but that's life. that is life it is not so yeah they got experience in the end those who were resilient enough and waited at the one who should benefit in my book those who could wait like the four hitches they should not enjoy it and they were off that's simple guys help me thank you maybe let me okay. before you thank me you see uh, I'm trying to pick up something from our celebrities, our artists that we called ourselves learned are not doing it. Nobody wants to promote the learning. Yeah. Nobody wants to promote the good news. But when I when I had the when I was given the opportunity to speak to you, I was so happy. <laughs> you get to my point. Yes, yes. I was so happy because. I look at the situation. How do we promote ourselves? Yeah. We have professors, professors emeritus. People want their knowledge. People appreciate that they know that what they are doing is good, but nobody is prepared. But you see these celebrities, you see Abebu Santana promoting, you see Nanama Mark Brown, a whole show promoting. These people are promoting themselves. What are we doing to ourselves? Mm. What are we doing to ourselves? A whole lot of knowledge, a whole lot of positivity, a whole lot of good things are, are, are hidden. And we turn around to complain that the children are going after things that are not needful. Who is providing the, the next alternative? Nobody is providing the best alternative. So there's nothing for us. So I will encourage your members, even if it's five, 10 people, let's make sure these are the parents that will take the news away. They will go to their schools. It's high time they go to schools and challenge them for the fact that social emotional learning should be made part of education. Very, very, very important. You see, you see, simple sitting arrangement, simple sitting arrangement in this part of our world is fighting against a very important social emotional skills, and that is empathy. When you come to most of our classrooms in government schools here, you sit here, somebody sits at your back, another person is at your back. Whatever emotions you are experiencing, the person does not see. So we carry the same mentality into leadership. We carry the same mentality into parliament. So you will let people into parliament, they don't look at their back. Go to the better Montessori schools, they don't sit like that. Yeah. Yes, people should Google about certain arrangement, tackling social emotional skills on the yeah. internet. They will find an article that I published in the year 2020. Uh, 20, uh, is it when I came into power? That was uh, 20, 2017. 2000, yes, when I came into power, when was that? Two, 2016. Yes, in 2017. Yes, in 2017, I made a publication on the fact that simple certain arrangement is fighting against the needed social and emotional skills. Experience in Kasua on the round table. What happens is that I started asking the children their name. The first person mentioned his, his name. The second one mentioned, the third one was not speaking. So the fourth one came in and mentioned the third person's name. And I asked the headmistress, what is this children teaching us? He was looking at my face. I said, they are teaching us collaboration, empathy, supportiveness, very, very important. He knows that that child has a name, but since he's not ready to mention for one reason or the other, he wants to come in and support the person. Do you think that if they have sat behind each other, would that child mention that person's name? No, that wouldn't have been possible. So a common sitting arrangement has the ability to help us develop some of these skills that we want the children to, do, to develop. Ability to connect and read people's emotions is very, very critical in this uh, life.
only thing left to say to you is thank you. Happy yeah. Father's Day to you. It is such thank an important day. Well. Father's Day. I hope the men were listening. I hope the as the women were listening and writing, the men were also listening, writing, making sure that you also picked up some of these nuggets and you are off to apply these nuggets to your life to improve things for you and for your kids. Crazy, you've really blessed me this day. You validated everything in my head. There are certain things that you've challenged that I've got to do for you and improve. And I hope those of you who've watched have done the same thing. I will stay on a little bit. Feel free to let me know here if you might be interested in a webinar. Feel free to come to my inbox and let me know about that one as well. I was thinking maybe 10 might be a number he will consider because he says he will even look at it if it's five people, even five people he'll be willing to work with. Missy, he was amazing, wasn't he? The ability to connect and read people's emotions is amazing. For those of you who want to learn, he referenced the guy, and I have put his book on display again. This is the Amazon link to his book. It is the book called Unmasking the Face. I have only come across this one a couple of times, I think, in some training sessions where this book um, bits from it. But yes. Unmasking so, the Face is basically... <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank you. I'll be back when I finish wrapping up. Good. Bye bye. Bye. Wow. Right. Go check it out. The few pages I've interacted with from this book, powerful, powerful. If you are interested in learning, if you want to understand people, when we recommend some of these texts, Go check them out. Unmasking the face. This is not for children. This is for you. When you read books like that, when you access information like that, you understand what's going on around you in a whole different way. And everything is funny to you. So most of the time, when I'm in scenarios, I have this look on my face and I'm always smiling. And people are like, what is Amma doing? Especially when I'm in group scenarios. When we are in groups, you'll find me do that. When people are behaving in particular ways, you will find me do that. And I'm watching people because I read people's faces. I don't just listen to what they say. I read your face. I read your body language. I check your eyes. And what comes out of your eyes makes more sense to me than what comes out of your mouth. Because I am one whose face is trained. I'm a teacher. My face is trained. There are times when I intentionally throw a tantrum and I'm laughing behind the mask. It's funny because I need to throw a tantrum to get the kids in order. And I do that. I am, I am an actress. I am an actress. And a lot of people who have learned to mask the face all know these things. It's unfortunately those who have not witnessed masking, those who are themselves not trained to control their own features, who don't understand these things. And you throw people cheap signals that people use to read you and manipulate you and you don't read their signals and it makes life difficult for you. If you really want life to happen and you want it to be seamless and you want it to be effortless, even when you are angry, you learn to do this and people don't quite understand what's going on. Yes, it's just that gleam in your eye which communicates to those who get it what the differences are. Anyway, Unmasking the Face, that's the book, Body Language. But this is not just baby body language. This is in-depth body language. Yeah, the person, one of the authors is the key figures behind the lie detector test. So it's serious stuff. Go check it out. It's called Unmasking the Face. If you are into that kind of reading, you will definitely enjoy it. Please understand it's not fiction. This is not cantata. This is not fiction. This is not entertainment. This is for learning to inform future actions. That's all we're doing. We are learning to inform future actions. That's it. Anyway, let me leave that particular one there. I will recommend other books as we go along. Um, but today, I want to just leave it with a mask in the face. I think those of you who go to get it and read it, 
we will discuss it in my book club and do a reading one of these days soon. But I will leave it here. I hope you've been blessed. I hope uh, the program was not too heavy for you on Father's Day. And happy Father's Day to all the men and women who fulfill that important role. Biology has nothing to do with it. It's your commitment and your decisions which make it deserving of you to receive this accolade this day. May God bless you. May he strengthen you. May he keep you so you can be witnesses to the fruits of your labor and be participants in their enjoyment. May God bless us all. And for those who are still here, my program is currently sponsored. And my program is sponsored by the book Reflections for a Thirsty Soul. It's written by Yafoda Atobra. Auntie Yaa for that, a lot of you would have seen Auntie Yaa on some of my panel discussions and on the program. She's a regular viewer. She, it's a book she wrote when she turned 60, in the build up to 60. So it's a book which is um, utilizing a person's lifetime learning. It's definitely one for you to read, especially if you're looking for motivation, if you're looking for inspiration, if you are in that period in your life when you need validity, um, go check it out. And today's guest was James Quasey Addison. And we discussed raising emotionally intelligent children. We are always pushing boundaries. We are always looking to get better. And one of the key things, one of the most important things on this journey to make things better is learning our emotions and how to manage them. Those of you who appreciate my content and you come to watch the video and you see the time it takes to put it together, well, it's taken three hours to actually run the show. But the conversations with Chrissy, conversations with the production people, a lot of those things have to go off my plate. A lot of those things will have to be uh, put in. I need an admin assistant and I cannot pay an admin assistant just for my salary because my salary is inadequate just for me. And so I've decided to go down the crowdfunding route in order to be able to improve some of those systems and to get the equipment, machinery, and things needed to run a better show. So I have started crowdfunding. Um, the website address is right there on the screen, patreon.com slash amamansen, patreon.com slash amamansen. And you can select from three levels, bronze, silver, gold. Bronze is five pounds a month. You can cancel any time and you can reinstate any time. Silver is £10 a month. You can again cancel and reinstate any time. Gold is £25 a month. The regularity of the monthly payments really is the decider. And that's why you find a lot of these charities and organizations like the monthly income because they like to see things trickle in so they can plan and budget what to do with that information in hand. So please, if you can, go to Patreon. Go and be uh, one of my champions. Select one of those. And if you want to make a one-off payment, you can click on the custom payment and you can select whatever you want to send. You prefer PayPal, get in touch with me. I will give you my PayPal account and you can send me what you can, what you are willing to contribute so we can continue to do more of this so we can all develop together. It's important that we grow. And I am committed to helping the community do so with a little bit of my connections, my support, and um, the little bit I've picked up alongside as I've gone through life's journey. Anyway, thank you. If you can help me, if you can champion it, it would be great. If not, and you know people who might be able and might be willing to support me, do send the link to them, patreon.com slash amamansen, and ask them to champion and to support me right there. I will be back in touch. Not tonight. I'm off to celebrate Father's Day. So no Wobadana tonight. We will be back on tomorrow night to continue and to unpick Father's Day and see what happened. See you soon. Good night.